welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Today, we're going to take a look at the Ranar CBX 20x24 Tabletop Exposure Unit. And what I'm going to do is we're going to compare it to the same type of exposure unit, but a floor unit that has a vacuum top. Okay, so we're going to compare the two units, take a look at them. I'm going to discuss the differences, the similarities, and we're going to talk about um, you know, can you make half tones with an industrial black lamp fluorescent exposure unit like this, a tabletop or a vacuum unit? Can you do that? And the answer is yes. So we're going to take a look at that. We're going to talk about it. But first, before I go on, please remember that you can buy screen printing equipment and supplies at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. And don't forget that all of your purchases are personally guaranteed by me, satisfaction guaranteed. If there's any problems whatsoever, you just give me a call personally and I take care of it. So let's get started taking a look at this particular tabletop exposure unit. All right, so this is the fluorescent industrial black lamp tabletop exposure unit, the CBX 20x24 made by Ranar. I sell this at catspitscreenprintsupply.com for $420. That includes the crating, and of course, you always get free shipping anywhere in the continental United States. It comes complete with the padded weight that goes, you know, for part of the exposure, which we're going to do today. We'll take a look at this. So uh, it comes with the padded weight, which is like pretty heavy. It's like 20 pounds or something. And this is a 110 unit, so it will plug into your standard 110 household outlet. So let's take some close-up looks. Looks. <laughs> let's take a few close-up looks at this particular unit, and I'll describe some of the characteristics of this unit, and then we're going to compare it to the floor exposure unit with the vacuum top, okay? So let's take a look at that real quick. This is the Ranar CBX 20x24 exposure unit. It's a tabletop unit. It has a padded weight that comes with it, like I said. And you can see it's an industrial black lamp fluorescent unit. Okay, in there. It's got a egg timer type thing that the increments are in minutes. And this is a 110 unit. So let's have a few closer looks. The unit is very similar to a vacuum floor unit and the bulbs are about three and a half or four inches you know three and a half inches four inches away from the glass which is going to be very similar to the floor units that ran our builds because some people ask me you know uh, what's the difference really between the floor unit and the tabletop units and do they work as well and they do work as well the only major difference is going to be that the tabletop unit does not have a vacuum top, and we're going to talk about what that means. Again, this unit is a 110 volt standard household three prong, you know, with the ground. And we have an egg timer type situation on here where each of the increments on this represents one minute, I believe, is what the story is. Okay, so you can turn the dial past a certain point and then it times down like an egg timer. Now, because this is an egg timer type of application here, and I'm using a very fast photopolymer, which is Sadi Chem Textile PC Blue, also available at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. Okay, um, I'm using that, and it's pretty fast. So I'm exposing at like, you know, 35, 40 seconds, 45 seconds. And so this is done in one minute increments, you know, so what I have done here is I have a little um, timer pedal type situation plugged in here so that I can turn the unit on, turn the timer all the way on, and then when I push that little pedal down, it will turn the light on. And I will use a digital timer to count down, you know, 35 or 40 seconds or whatever I decide to do for this little test exposure today. You can use, actually, it's important to note, you could actually use a light switch you know, you could plug this into a light switch if you had exposures under a minute. You could plug it into a light switch. You could just um, unplug it, you know, or you can, you know, try to dial it in as close as you can. And with dual cures, you're going to probably be above the minute mark anyway, so that's fine. All right, now, contrastingly, this is a floor unit, an exposure unit that stands on its own, and this is a vacuum top. Okay, so the biggest difference that we're going to see here is twofold really. We're going to see that we have a big vacuum top here that 
opens and closes, and if we close it and turn on the vacuum, okay, it vacuums down the screen and your film positive and makes a perfect sandwich between the film positive and the screen. Okay, and that's, that's where we're going to find one of our biggest differences between a vacuum top and a tabletop exposure unit. Okay, it seems that I forgot to clean the top of the exposure unit the last time I cleaned up the shop, but here's the other big difference, obviously, is that we have a digital timer here, which we're able to set to seconds. Okay, so that's a little bit of an advantage when you're working with photopolymer emulsions or, you know, very, very fast emulsions. So that's one of the other differences. And again, here you will find that the bulbs are very similar. They're about three and a half to four inches from the glass. So basically we're talking about the same exact type of exposure unit. So it's the same unit. The only difference is, is that one has a vacuum top and the other does not. Okay, so that is the major difference. So let's talk about that a little bit. So the tabletop industrial black lamp fluorescent exposure unit is pretty much the same thing as the vacuum top floor industrial black lamp exposure unit. They're basically the same units except for that one difference that the tabletop exposure unit does not have a vacuum top but the floor unit, the vacuum top, does, okay? It has a vacuum top, okay? And we're going to demonstrate what this means, hopefully. I'll be able to demonstrate this a little bit. But what it means is this is the biggest difference between the two units and the, the biggest factor that's going to affect your screen making between the two units. They're both equally capable of exposing screens and half tones and everything. The difference is that sandwich, okay? So what that means is the sandwiching, okay, and this is just an old screen that I have. I don't use this. It's, it's kind of a demo screen with emulsion coated on it, right? So the deal is, is the sandwich is what I'm talking about. When we talk about a sandwich, we're talking about sandwiching the film positive to the emulsion coated screen. Now, in order to get the best resolution, the best um, detail, the hot, you know, the crisp, sharpest, best stencil that you can possibly get, you want this film positive to be pressed up against this emulsion coated screen really, really good. You want it to make complete 100% contact in all places, all over the surface area of the inkjet film positive against the emulsion coated screen. Okay, so that's what a vacuum top does. A vacuum top, when we put it in, into the exposure unit and put this all in and turn on the vacuum top, it pulls out the air causing the pressure of the earth, right? Atmospheric pressure. Once we, re once we re remove the pressure of the air, we've got like a vacuum, so to speak. And so it's pushing this film positive against this screen like to the maximus, okay? All right, now with a tabletop unit, we're not using that vacuum, that pressure, that pressure, atmospheric pressure or anything like that. We're not using that. We're actually using a weight. So the screen is put down very much in the same way as the vacuum top, but in this case, we're going to put a piece of black cloth on here and then the, the padded weight, okay? So what that means is that it is possible that you could have a more challenging time with high detail or um, what we call half tones, right? We're gonna we're gonna take a look at this one right here. This is a half tone that I did in another video, and we we shot this on the vacuum top and made a screen, and we went through the whole process of doing this little Ben Franklin design. So today I'm gonna expose this on the tabletop unit just to show you that it is possible to make half tones on a tabletop unit. It's just a little bit different. Could be a little bit more challenging for you, but it is certainly doable. But um, Again, if you're thinking that you're going to be doing a lot of half tones and a lot of high detail, um, any four color process and things like that, then you may want to consider a vacuum top. Okay, so the way we would set up a screen to burn on this tabletop exposure unit is something like this. And you could tape the you could tape the uh, you could tape this to the back if you wanted to. But for today, I'm going to show it to you like this, so it kind of demonstrates what's going on here, right? So 
we can put the film positive down here or tape it to the back of the screen wherever you want it that's fine all right but this is basically the sandwich so this, the film positive goes here and the screen will go on top like this so that the film positive reads right okay you know all that stuff right all right now for this unit it is suggested that you use a piece of black fabric all right forgive my piece of black fabric today all i have is this piece of background material so it's kind of a little big but we'd use something like this and it's nice if it comes down a little bit over the edges of the frame okay and then at this point we're going to need to use the padded weight and it's probably best to use, you know, don't use a bundled up piece of black like this. Try to, try to cut it. Like ideally, if I was going to use this, I would cut, cut it so it was one piece. You know what I'm saying? So my weight can sit on the screen a little bit better rather than having a bunched up blanket here. But this is, I don't want to cut my piece of background material today. It's, I use it for uh, some things. So, all right. So a piece of black fabric big enough to come over the edges of the, of the frame is fine. And then at this point, we would know our, our exposure and whatnot, and we would turn it on and expose the screen. When the timer goes off, we take the screen out, and we're going to bring it to the washout booth. All right, and that's it. And that's basically it. Now, the difference is, on a vacuum top, we do it like this. On the vacuum top exposure unit, the floor unit, I would be inclined to tape it, of course, because that's what I do. And then I flip it over, I put it in the unit, we center it, you know, somewhat, pull the uh, top down, and turn on the vacuum. And when I turn on the vacuum, that's what's going to create that sandwich between the film positive and the emulsion coated screen. <laughs> Basically, the two units are exactly the same. It's the same exposure unit, the same lights, the same distance from glass to bulb, the same wattage. The floor exposure unit is also a 110 standard household outlet. And by the way, that's the Ranar XPO 2331, which you can also get at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. All right, so that's the biggest difference about the two units, the floor unit, the vacuum top, and the table top is simply the vacuum top. Okay, so again, to reiterate and emphasize what we're trying to prevent by sandwiching the, net, the film positive to the screen perfectly, 100%, is we're trying to prevent any light going around the film positive and causing problems in the exposure. So when we vacuum this down, or we use the padded weight properly, okay, then we get a better result. And it, I also might add that uh, I think, honestly, both with the tabletop exposure unit and the vacuum exposure unit, using a, a warped frame will, you know, give you more of a challenge to get that screen flat and to get your, your sandwich flat and 100% across the entire surface area. So, uh, again, it goes back to screen making and using a really good screen. I suggest using static aluminum metal screens that you can also get at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. This is a one color half tone. It's a 45 line per inch on a 230 mesh okay so here's the screen i taped my film positive on there it's a 230. i'm going to put it on here just like that like i showed you in the demo there and for this actual burn i'm going to go ahead and unwrap this a little bit like i said i i don't want a big puffy thing right for the padded weight to go on so i'm going to put that over the top and then we're going to make sure there's no wrinkles. We're going to put the padded weight in the middle. Make sure that's down nice over your film positive, centered on the film positive, making sure that it's as flat as possible. Okay, for me, I have a little digital timer. Okay, because I'm at like 35, 40 seconds, so I'm going to turn on my egg timer portion. And now I'm going to hit the timer and hit this foot pedal and it's going to expose. Okay, so let's see if we can, hopefully you'll be able to see the light. Let's see here, I'll tuck this up 
a little like this, and you should be able to see the light when we expose, okay? So, <clears throat> all right, let's try this out. Okay, recall, I'm gonna hit my timer. Okay, let's see, the light's on, yes, you can see that, I'm not sure if you can see that. All right, but the light's on, I'm holding it for about 35, 40 seconds. Again, you can do this with a light switch, just plug it into a light switch. You know, if you're using a photopolymer like this, it's really fast. This might make it a little bit easier to get your exposure rather than using the egg timer. You know? So, well, let's see what happens. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so I just turned off the bulb. Now I can wind this down. And we're ready to uh, go over to the washout booth. So let me get set up in the washout booth and then we'll wash this out and see how, how well it came out, okay? Okay, it might be a little difficult to see this because the exposure is not the greatest thing. But I'll show you close up with a screen. looks pretty good let's check it out all right so this thing is still in the washout booth I didn't even blow any water out of it or anything because I'm not going to use the screen it was just to show you guys that it is totally possible to make half tones with an industrial black lamp fluorescent unit and even a tabletop unit that does not have a vacuum top so it's completely possible it's all about your technique your method and just paying attention to what you're doing so, you know, check it out. The detail here came out pretty good. 45 line, half tone here, one color half tone on a 230 mesh. Not bad at all considering I wasn't really, um, you know, focusing on anything except making the video. <laughs> okay, here's another quick look at, uh, you know, close up look at one of the detailed areas. Um, again, pretty good. So, uh, I would have to conclude that, you know, yes. You can. Yes, you can do it. That's it for today. I think uh, we demonstrated well the point I was trying to get across. So if anybody ever tells you that it's impossible to get half tones on an industrial black lamp fluorescent unit, that is incorrect. And if somebody tells you that you can't do half tones or detail on a tabletop unit without a vacuum top, that is also incorrect. So, um, you know, I think we showed that here and the you know the biggest difference between the two is the vacuum top the industrial black lamp fluorescent exposure tabletop unit does not have a vacuum top but if you pay attention to what you're doing and take care and uh you know pay attention to details and make sure your everything is your all your ducks are in a row use a nice aluminum metal screen and everything like that you know, this type of unit can very, be very cost effective and very useful for people who are starting out. And even, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people who are doing, you know, been printing commercially for a little while may still be using a tabletop unit. They can do a lot. So, um, you know, it's a really good value for the money. Again, this is the Ranar CBX 20x24. I sell this for $420 with shipping included anywhere in the continental United States. Okay, and um, any of the Ranar equipment that I feature in my videos, I offer on catspitscreenprintsupply.com. All of my prices on that e-commerce site include crating and with the equipment, major equipment purchases over $100, that includes the free shipping 
you know, there, there's no shipping charges anywhere in the continental United States. So that's a really cool deal that I have for the equipment. So check it out. Thanks a lot. Sorry about all the uh, selfless plugs today, but you know, I was having fun with it. So uh, thanks a lot for watching my videos. I really appreciate your time and attention very much. Thanks for watching. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe. I really need your support to keep doing what I'm doing, and I really want to. So please subscribe, rate thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.